Well, hello and welcome to the Points of Interest podcast. This is the most generic podcast on the internet. My name is Josh Hawks. I am the 303 Ninja. And right over there, he is my podcasting partner for life. He is the other guy. It's Mr. Francis Fernandez. That's it? Just a wave? Uh, Oh, hello there, Ginger. Wow. Just Ginger's in there already, like ready to go. Look at that. Hi, Ginger. How's it going? Um, yeah. How are you, man? How's it going? That, that, that's so energetic of you. <laughs> Introducing, you're like, hey. Well, you, 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 you caught me off guard when you said I didn't, like, I, I waved. I'm like, I said something. I said hi to Ginger. I was saying hello. Yeah, but never mind. Waving doesn't work for the audio folks. Yeah, but she, but she can see me. <laughs> uh, it's so fine. there you it's go. Fine. It's fine. Someone can see me. So that's all that matters. Yeah. We can all see you, Francis. I have done. I don't know what to go from there. Uh, what's up, man? What are you doing? What's she's going even, on? She's she's waving back. Uh, no, uh, everything's cool. Um. Just wish I I wish somebody would interview me on the street and I could say something clever and become wealthy and famous overnight. Well, <laughs> I mean, we talked about this a little bit last week, but I mean, she's famous for giving drunken, sloppy blowjobs. Allegedly. Oh, but they're talking about it. She, yeah. yeah, she talks about it. She's not talking she about giving it. Well, she does drunken, it. sloppy people jobs. Yeah. yeah. Um, well, she, she she now makes enough money where she quit her her um, job at a factory. She had a factory she job. licked she envelopes. <laughs> I forget what she did. Yeah, something like that. It was something, trying, something trying weird. To, but she, trying to, I was trying to pop you and it didn't work. She, she, yeah, she, she, she's on those envelopes. She goes, "Hot Tua on those envelopes." That's why she knows. She, she's aware. She's like, "Oh yeah, that's why I do my envelopes." But yeah, she's like, she, you know, she has her own show now. She's getting her own reality TV show. She's like, she's judging. Uh, she, ju- she, they recently saw her judging a bikini contest in Florida. Um. Or maybe it was in Florida, but it was she did she judge I mean, bikini the, contest. The jokes are just writing themselves, but go on. But she's yeah, and she's been on uh, some talk shows already. She's 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 making the rounds. Her fifteen minutes of fame is extending. Hmm. It's been three weeks. <laughs> it's been three weeks, and she's still like talked about. Uh, I, I don't know her name. She's known as the Hawk Tua girl there, Ginger. Don't look it up, but <laughs> <laughs> it, it, she, it was just this, there was this woman who got interviewed. Well, so there's this very popular, like, um, so sh- there's this very popular social media thing where, where guys will go out in the middle of the night, two or three o'clock in the morning and interview drunk 20 somethings as they go through the clubs and they ask about dating and they ask about relationships and this one particular girl uh, was asked a few a few questions. She 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 says Haktua as an answer for one of those questions, mm. and nice the conversion. internet fell in love. Nice, diversion. yeah. The internet fell in love with her, and and now she's popular for saying one thing that people kind of gravitated towards. So <sighs> it's our turn, Josh. It's our turn now. I think. Say something. You have to. You have to. Have to say something clever at a convention. Um, that would help. You know say what also cool. would help? You being my. You said you're my uh, co-host for life. Kind of really needed you. Oh. Over this past weekend, because oh. you know, I as quick as as quick as I am, you know, sometimes you're in awe of the art being drawn in front of you, or. You think you've written enough questions to get through enough time, but your questions aren't good enough. Think, think, good enough. And the answers aren't long enough. So you run through your questions and you're like, uh oh, I'm struggling now. Where's my co host for life? Um, <laughs> uh, oh, all right. But <laughs> did, no. you, did you have another Brianna Hildebrand situation? Is that what was going on? 
Uh, yeah, yeah, kind of. But um, no, this past this past weekend, the Fourth of July weekend, I was uh, honored enough. Honored enough. I was honored to um, be chosen to be part of the moderating team for the comics panel portion of of the show. So I got to moderate all weekend, which was pretty rad. I didn't get to see a lot of the show otherwise. You know, bits and pieces here and there when I could, but. Most of my, my time over the weekend was spent in room 605 or on the showroom floor um, on the HQ stage. Oh. That one okay. was a little more nerve-wracking than being in the panel room. I'll get to it sure. when I get to it. But a uh, total of 10 panels over a course of three days. Um, I did not get mm. to attend Sunday because my job was like, you better show up. And I was like, okay, well, I, I will. Um, yeah. But got to uh, moderate for the uh, creator, uh, producer, creator of um, the Boondocks cartoon. Uh, along with, he was a producer and writer on um, Everybody Hates Chris. Uh, what was his name? Okay. Rod- Rodney Barnes. He was a cool guy to talk to. He was fun. Uh, okay. Not I watched Boondocks, but I'm not like a diehard, you know, like could recall episodes and recall all the characters' names. And But I was familiar every, you know, when he would talk about things, I'm like, oh, I kind of remember that episode. Um, yeah. I did want to ask, like, how does one become a producer? Like... <laughs> I, I don't. Mean, yeah. Like I think that's a legitimate question to ask, and being that I, this, I looked it up. It's like they they make things happen. Well, okay. How how do you make things happen? Well, the producer's the one with the money, right you now. That's all a producer is is the is the one who's funding. Essentially, I mean, outside of companies, right? right but right. I think the those are the ones who like make the big decisions and. Mm-hmm on how things should happen. So if you but, have money. Yeah. And well, power, I, I guess that's what it came down to. I just didn't, I didn't know how to really to ask it. So I just kind of skipped over it. But, um, okay. and all the different things he was talking about, he also brought up that he was a former, uh, con- contracted WCW wrestler. And WCW was Ted Turner's venture into wrestling from a million years ago. Okay. And he was in the training camp called the powerhouse. And I'm, I was familiar with WCW and all that. And I was like, that's really interesting. I'd, you know, I'd love to talk to you about, about that some other time, you know, cause this is a comics panel, <laughs> but wrestling is awesome. I feel like you could have, we could have diverted in. there for a little bit. Probably it would have been fine, but you know, it was a comics thing. Uh, cool. yeah. who else did we talk to? I got all my notes right in front of me. I don't know why I just don't look. Uh, Scott Snyder of of comic book fame. Uh, he he was, that was informative. There was also a guy that was supposed to be there named Jock, J-O-K. But okay. I think he came on stage with me and they realized that I was the mo- the moderator and then scurried off. Oh. Oh, that's I'm not, sad. I'm not really sure. I was like. Because I I didn't even like get to I, I don't even know I, I I'm assuming it was this jock character but I have no idea because again don't know who he is, uh, right. but Scott was fun to talk to you know he he does more than just writing he was he did art as well as when he was younger but then he was always pretty much a writer but wanted to get into art type stuff uh, I have all these recorded so I'm gonna plan on putting these out some at some point as well. Um, oh, uh, not the cleanest of audio, but it's it's audio. Are you going to include the fifteen minutes of of that one time you left it in the room? I'll get to that. Uh, <laughs> Jason Aaron, he, he he did the big uh, his big thing was um. Oh shit! Now I'm going to forget. Uh, uh, he talked about the Hulk. A lot. I don't know if he did it or if he was just a fan of it or if it was um, Thor. Thor is who he talked about. Sorry. 
he oh, he's a writer. He, yeah, he's okay. a right. He would he had the the Jane Foster story, Lady Thor. Oh, okay. That was his story, apparently. Um, okay. Nice. I did ask him how he felt about Marvel taking bits or inspiration and turn it into a movie. I don't think he liked the question, but he had a good a good answer for it. You know, just kind of well, uh, reading the face as I'm asking him the question. I know. Yeah. I and and I'm I overanalyze as well. So that's just kind of what I do. How'd you overanalyze? Well, it's just that, that's I'm telling you right now. Like that's how I overanalyze. I'm like, oh, oh, I thought you overanalyze his answer. No, like, no, no. Okay. I over overanalyze just interactions. Period. Oh, gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Um, okay. But oh, and then uh, Cami Garcia, who's a writer. Um, and she brought uh, somebody named uh, Tom Zoller with her uh, so she didn't have to do all okay. the talking. But again, I wasn't prepared for Tom to be there. Um, do you know what he does? He's a, uh, an artist. Okay. I think he's a, he does writing as well. Uh, but he was most known, I think, for My Little Pony stuff, I believe. Could be wrong on that. Yes. Okay. He is. He is known for my. Yes, he is. Yes. So. That 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 uh, I wasn't prepared, but like the questions, all the questions that I kind of wrote mm-hmm. could could work for a couple people, you know, that were of the same ilk or whatever, same they, kind of genre. They were generic enough. You mean they were generic <laughs> enough? Okay. On that, which is note, a smart though, move. It's a smart move to do as a moderator. So well, you're doing the right thing. Also, you hand me a you hand me a microphone. You put me in front of a crowd, even though I'm nervous. I am going mm-hmm. to talk about this show. So that's how every panel started was with me mm-hmm. selfishly plugging the show. But I, I modified oh. it a little bit. Oh boy. I modified it because you weren't there. Okay. You weren't there to give me the oh god sure. look and and sigh and don't and tell me oh please stop doing that you're embarrassing me. No, it's not. <laughs> I, I, it's moments like this where I wish we had like a like a one stop shop. You know, like a, we should really make a link tree. So then mm-hmm. you're like, you just use the link tree and you can see it all. You know. So, but how I modified it was like, it, I, it's it? the most generic podcast on the internet. So it kind of makes me the best person to at, to ask. You know, to, to moderate for these panels because I have no particular fandom. Did you say that out loud? Really? Yeah. Oh, interesting. That's an interesting thing to confess to these people is that, well, I don't have a specific fan. Oh, no, I guess that's pretty good. You know, because then, oh, you're a fan of everything. Kind of kind of by saying that, right? In a sense. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and it got, it got a pop. It popped the crowd at every single one. Good. So I say it was a good, good move. I think, um, so. I think so too. We need to make cards. You and I need to make some business cards, I think. Or things we can pass out. Yeah, something. Hats. Um but the the one that I was Jesus. the one that I was most excited for over the the entire course of the weekend. Uh yes. was the panel with Guy Gilcrest. Who was the crest? character designer for the Muppet Babies? Mm. And Jim you- basically gave him the entire project. He came from the comic book strip, the Muppet Babies or Muppets or Muppet Babies comic book strip, and then became mm. the Muppet Babies cartoon. You were asking me what now? Did you ever did you ask him about the 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 legs on the nanny in Muppet Babies? Did you ask like how did you it, it was a perfect opportunity for it <laughs> and I took it. Oh good. What did he say? He brought up Nanny mm-hmm. and how originally Nanny wasn't gonna be Nanny. Nanny was gonna be a babysitter, like a teeny bopper type of babysitter. Oh. Okay. And then they changed it to a, to Nanny. And I was like, hey, can I tell you something about Nanny? And he's like, what? And I was like, I kind of had the hots for Nanny. And he, he looked at me. He's like, what? And I was like, 
just a great character and had awesome socks. <laughs> had great had great knees, yeah. yeah. It, it it popped him. It, he liked that. But what I was going to say, Francis, is that when I did that introduction as the most generic pod, the most generic podcast, guy got super excited. He's like, that, oh, good. Is, that is a great intro. That's awesome. You know I'm going to like it because it's generic. And I'm like, this guy is great. He's my number one fan now. Um, we talked Jim Henson, Muppets, character design. Uh, I reached out to our buddy Jay, Mr. Jay Fosgett, because he hmm. is very closely tied to the Muppets as well. And I'm like, Jay, yes. give me some, give yeah. me some insider, give me some, some trivia, pointers. give me something. Mm-hmm. Rolf the dog, his favorite character. Yes, had a had a Muppet uh, commissioned in the Muppet hmm. Babies design. Okay. He also has a Kermit. Oh. So we okay. kind of talked about he brought the Kermit to the to the panel. And he mm. kinda he showed me, you know, this and that. And he he did, did he? a little bit, but then he actually like stuck his hand in there into into Kermit. And he goes, I'm gonna be honest, I'm not a Muppeteer. I'm not an uh I don't do impressions. But Wait, I, he's the voice, right? Oh no, no. he drew him. He, drew, just, right. he just did the character design. Okay. He goes, but, and he, Kermit looks at me. Guy Gilchrist yeah. and the crowd ceased to exist. No. Oh. It was just Kermit looking at me, who's designed mm-hmm. in Muppet Babies design. So it's not, you know, oh. Muppet Kermit. So it it's was a Muppet. Muppet. He wasn't wearing Muppet a diaper. Baby. But the face, well, it's really the eyes. Right. Are they're bigger, I'm guessing. A little bit bigger, and they're designed as the Muppet Babies frog eyes Ooh, as opposed wow. to okay. adult Kermit eyes. Okay. And as he oh. <laughs> the guy's doing the fucking Muppeteering, but Kermit's mm-hmm. he's like, look at my eyes, and I'm like I can't look at your eyes, Kermit. I'm going to cry. <laughs> right. I didn't say that. Right. But he's like, he's doing the, he's doing Kermit things, you know, and he's got the hand movement and I'm just like, hold it together. Josh, adult Josh is in control. Six year old Josh cannot control and start crying because that's what right. I want to do right now. Yeah. Even yeah. just talking about it. Like I just the hairs. Right. Um, it was just, it was it was cool. It, was, it, it it definitely helped that he was like all excited for the intro and you know excited to talk to me and it, it just it most comfortable. Not the most comfortable I've ever been in a panel, but made me very very comfortable. Uh, did you get his contact info? Or you, will you be able to like have him as a guest on this show? I don't or think so. Or no? okay. I don't think so. I don't think so. Okay. Uh, but it was just. It was a lot of fun. Uh, I gotta find my page. Uh, it's just a lot of fun to talk about Muppets with somebody that was like in there doing it, a part of it every day. You know, get, you know that's the closest I'll probably ever be to Jim Henson at this point. I was gonna say, yeah. I mean, how great if you had connections for you to do like a cameo as a Muppet. You know, you have your own little Muppet to control. So, Jay Fosgit. But I don't know how connected that dude was, so I don't know. I mean, he's still <laughs> yeah, fairly they're... connected, I'm guessing, because he's traveling as, you know, someone connected to the Muppets. But, you know, right. Jay Fosgit designed, you know, drew me as a Muppet. It's in his uh, portfolio. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not saying that he would submit it, but if it ever did... And Muppet Josh ever got created, I would just retire. Broke as hell, but I would retire because fuck it, man. Like, you don't need to work once you become a Muppet. The funny thing is, I could totally see what your Muppet looks like, you know? Like, well, you'd look like in felt, you know? 
Like it'd be great. You have kind of like the aesthetic for a, like you you would you would have a very distinct Muppet. You have a distinct look. You'd have a distinct Muppet uh, uh, to reflect that. So totally. I would just hope that like they would just you know figure it you know do a little a pinky pull you know for the eyebrow. For the one look uh, I oh, have. Oh, oh, well, yeah, yeah. Because you, you, you have, uh, since you have the internet's eyebrow, you don't have, mm. the, you don't have the people's eyebrow, you have the <laughs> internet's eyebrow. <laughs> nice. I love that. Um, but yeah, it's just, it's just a real amazing experience the whole time. Mm. It was, mm-hmm. you, you know, Francis firsthand, how, how mm-hmm. much I freak out over these things. And they always turn it's, out decent. Every single one, mm. even in, even in the dumpster fire of, of one particular one, like it still if came we, out if okay. We, you know, we're, I, you know, we're, we're not, we're both not professionals. No, neither of us do this for a living. You know, we, we're not journalists. Like we're not part of any, you know, we're, we're, we're just two guys who do this thing. So it's not like we get this opportunity very often. So when you do, it's nerve. Of course, why? Of course, it's going to be nerve wracking. Yeah. I mean, um, like, you know, we, we, uh, on the press side of things, the media side of things, I think we got that fairly covered as far as like reporting on things, taking, well, less pictures nowadays. Just especially when I spent all weekend in a, in a panel room. Like, they're, you know, right. Not really taking a lot of pictures. Well, we don't, but, I mean, I mean, look, but we yeah. don't, we don't always have the access that we need that for the stuff that we're really interested in to talk to those well, people I, that you know, the projects that we're interested in are our level that we're, yeah. we can't get to that level quite yet. Well, so I mean, this is going to sound weird, but like, I don't know if necessarily the press stuff was our calling anywhere. Well, at least yours, right? I feel like yours is like moderating and, 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 and talking to people in panels and stuff. Like, I think that's more of your, uh, your, uh, tool, not tool belt. What is it called? <laughs> that's wheelhouse. your, that's your wheelhouse. Yeah. That's like, that's more of your thing. I mean, when we were, do, when we had the, all those opportunities at great Philly, Right. We were nervous then too. Like we were freaking out then too. But like you were, you were able to ro- roll with the punches way better. Uh, no matter what was given to you, whether it was a, a, an unresponsive guest or um, a really loud crowd, right? That where you can barely hear Hercules in trying to talk to people. Like if, if even in those situations, right? Like you're able to make things work. Um, I think that's where your access is. I think what you're doing now, because I'm, I, I have no doubt that this is you'll be doing this every year from the, from this way from here forward. This is what you're doing every July, right? This is all you're doing is is just, if it's I don't know if it's back July Fourth weekend. It is actually yes, <clears throat> yeah, because July Fourth is on a Friday, so it's, it makes more sense. But like this is what this is what you're doing every year, like. I know this, you know this, we were, we, we know this, right? Like this is set in stone. So I think this is where it's going to be. It's going to, it's just going to be something that you, you know, you're going to be like those people who like, this is what they do, right? Like this is, people start somewhere in which they go circuit to circuit doing this type of thing. It may just be in Colorado, but you'll be able to talk to the people you really want to talk to you'll at some point become friends with them because a lot of moderators are friends with the people on the panels. Like a lot of moderators yeah, are yeah. really... We like, know that. We know that. Rub- we, we have a friend that, that... Yeah. 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 So like that's you starting this year. So moving forward, I can definitely see that as you progress through this this new kind of this new avenue that you're going down. Hey, happy Tuesday. You're just going to make friends you, with these people. Push. What happened? I said happy Tuesday to you, Push. Oh hi, 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 push. Yeah, welcome. Yeah, I mean, I like I said, I had a lot of fun. It it uh, challenging in the sense of like, I I'm, I always freak out before every, before it happens. Of course, um, my girlfriend yeah. was with me on on the first day, mm-hmm. and I only had one panel to do, and we got there and we sure. were 
walking around and doing shopping and i'm just looking at my watch the whole time <laughs> of course yeah you know and Power. yeah and she's like do we need to go and i'm like no i'm just nervous you know we we got an hour you know we got 45 minutes you know whatever it was and finally it was time to go to to the old to the old room and mind you she's never seen me do this right so there wasn't any like added pressure or anything like that but like in my head i i got this opportunity i didn't want to fuck it up ultimately no you didn't did you have a camera no pictures of you doing this thing no one took pictures of you while you're up there uh i th- believe there's a handful of pictures I had to post them, man. Uh, well, I, that, I'm off the next co- couple of days, so okay, I haven't posted cool. really anything yet. But uh, she she was there. I believe she took a, a few pictures, and I believe there are a few more out there as well um, from other attendees. But, uh, you know, it was kind of cool to, to do my thing in, in uh-huh. front of my lady. You know, so she can, you know, so I'm not just, you know, I don't tell her like, oh, I, this is what I do and never actually see it. She's been to the shows with me, but not on the days where these opportunities have come up. Uh, so, yeah, yeah I don't know. It was, it was just kind of cool to, you know, so she can kind of see me and I guess in my new element and again, not knowing who these people are doing a fair bit of research so I'm at least familiar and luckily the first few panels were just talkers well which was yeah. great I mean I think I'm pretty sure they 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 look out for specifically people who stop won't stop talking yeah like that's kind of the panels that they want is those guys who can who can hold on unlike other convent you know other panels that you've been on where they if you don't keep the conversation going they have no idea what to say yeah. you know yeah it's which happens and and, and happens. i mean that that happens from time to time to time yeah. i think and we, i i got to be with somebody on their very first this is the very first time they'd ever been to huh. a comic con and then their very first uh, panel who was it you remember the name no the character okay. he played, yes. What's his character name? Galaxy Quest, and he smiled a lot. The it's whatever wait, wait, wait was it Galaxy Quest? What's the movie with Tim Allen? He's in space. Galaxy Quest. Yeah. So the character smiles a lot. That's what he's known for. Uh, to smile a lot in the whole. Was movie. it Enrico Colantoni? Nope. 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 No. Nope. Uh, was it? Uh, uh, who smiled like he smiled like his, uh, he was the one who smiled like it, it, was he one of the main characters or was he an alien he was, he was an alien he was an alien uh, Tony Shalhoub no it wouldn't be Tony Shalhoub it wouldn't no. be Sam Rockwell <laughs> no alright well whoever he was I'm sure he was great no he, he was fun to talk to he just he he was really nervous beforehand he didn't really know like you know how to how to be at a comic con or what really to talk about? Jed Jed Reeves. Well, why was he Jed Reeves? So why was he at a con? Why was he at a comic con? Because that's what celebrities of A to D list do. When they need him, I don't know. I don't know. I I don't know how you get on a comic con tour as a celebrity. Jed Reeves. Oh, Jed Reeves. Oh. Uh, he's he's in stuff. Yeah, he's been <laughs> he's in a bunch like of a, stuff, but he'd never he's been, been in a bunch to a, of stuff. Yeah. He hadn't been to a comic con or done a panel before. Oh, he does a lot of nerdy stuff too, which is so funny. So he just he was uncomfortable. That was you know early early in the moderating path. So you know, there's two nervous dudes on stage trying to work through it, and we had a good what time. Did you guys talk about. Just in him. Just, it's, okay. it's always about the person, right? Well, yeah. But I mean, like, okay. Well, good. You I'm, know, I'm so. real. Is he? Is he? He looks British. Is he British? I think he just, he just looks, looks Scottish chaps. 
Oh, okay. He just he just looks like a British guy. Just based on his face. <laughs> well, okay, fair. But um it but, was value so thanks. Oh, thanks, Push. See oh, there you go. But no, just overall, just a an awesome experience. Um good. Getting getting to the the few friends that I did that I did get to see, traveling friends, um, when I told them what I was doing for the weekend, all gave me all the support in the world, much like you do yourself, my friend. Um, but like you know, our our friend Nikki Nikki Rap of of voice acting fame, you know, she she was there with her partner and the both of them were just like, dude, you got this, like. Don't worry. It's fine to be nervous, but you got this. Stop being stupid. And I'm just like, yeah, it's fine. Um, yeah. What? When you do it, you're, you're going to be doing this more. You'll, 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 yeah. it, it, of course, it's it's tough. So you, yeah. you'll get used to it. You know, you're going to do it yeah, so often. It's like old hat. It, it, that's, I mean, that's the plan or the goal or whatever. Yeah. Right? But, right, um, right. Yeah. But it was just, uh, I mean, I definitely missed having my co-partner for the whole thing. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, my co-host would have been nice. Well, but uh, yeah. just, like I said, overall, just a phenomenal weekend. I had a great time. Um, my Good. my my fear of speaking in public is, is probably always going to be there. But it's weird, much like my job, where... I could turn a light switch on and be mm-hmm. not become a different person, but be take on different responsibilities. Yes. The, of an aggressive nature. Right. Stepping onto that stage, still nervous, but I'm able to push it to the back of my brain and just go with it. Like it's, it's happening. I can't run off the stage now. So, here we are, hit record, and just see what happens. Have fun. So, the big question I have for you is, do they have a staff room like they do a press room where they serve you donuts and coffee and bagels? You know what, Francis? <laughs> I just want to I feed you. I am an idiot. And oh, didn't, didn't look for it. even look for it. Because <laughs> you know there is, right? There's a yeah, room for you. I know there is. To, to, I know yeah, that yeah. there is. I think yeah. I even saw it. Oh, but that's cool. Okay, at least but, saw it. But like in passing kind of thing. Uh, okay, you didn't go in. Like, okay. oh, that's a room of, of snacks, you know, sort of thing. Oh, that's some sort of, you know. 10 forward, if you will, but probably for staff. Right. That's so inside fucking baseball, but, um, yeah, it's fine. <laughs> so I had, I had, I had picked up my press badge mm-hmm. and I had forgotten because I, again, nerves. Sure. I had forgotten to pick up my staff badge on the first day. You got both. I got both. Nice. Yes, sir. Um, <laughs> speaking of nerves, after the first panel, yeah, I grab my backpack. I grab my girlfriend. Oh, yes. We go yeah, yeah. walking around. She's dressed as Link. You know, mm-hmm. we're shopping, having a good time. We stop at mm-hmm. our, our, our friend Nikki Rapp's booth to be like, I did it, Nikki. And... While we're talking to Nikki, I just got this, my, my stomach just dropped. And I went, this is something. <laughs> I went, oh shit. My yeah. 250 plus dollar recording device is left in a panel room all by its lonesome. I hope that was like, so there wasn't a panel going on. Hot. I, that's like, what I thought. Okay. So I'm like, babe, we have to run downstairs. I'm sorry, but we got to go. Like, mm-hmm. expensive equipment. So she understands. We run downstairs. 
And I get to the panel room, and I'm like, please tell me there's not a panel going on to the room attendant. He's like, no, it's empty. I was like, oh, thank God. So I run in there, and there's my recording device. Still in recording mode, by the way. Just sitting on the table on stage. Oh, on stage, too? Okay. Yeah. It wasn't on the podium or anything. No. On stage. stage. Like they, They do a stage with a table on the stage, and I just had it sitting on the table. And yeah, you know, pointing at my subject, you know, whoever it was. Yeah, just left it there. Just nervous wreck. And after the first one, after recovering my device, everything was yes. fine. I remembered, remembered my device. I remembered a pen. I remembered a notepad with my questions, with room to write down notes as they spoke. I'm a very a, a, attentive person while someone's talking i just don't always get to come back to the thing they talked about because they say something else i'm like oh that's interesting too (laughs) sure yeah it happened of course right tangents i mean Uh, do it here but i also got to do some sketch duels man yes i will fully admit i need to research some sketch duels to see kind of how the flow goes because you did it last year. I did, yeah, and I was uncomfortable doing it last year too. Um, mm-hmm. And I get it; I understand how it goes. But I am so amazed at artwork being created mm. right in front of me, right next to me, that I was—I right. forgot. I was like, I forgot. I'm supposed to talk. I even said that during one of them. I was like, Oh, I'm sorry. Are you guys. supposed to really talk? Are, are you just while they're like, doing it? So you kind of ask them questions, just kind of keep it lighthearted. Yeah you know, sort of thing, just to keep it not just two people just drawing, you know, the whole time. You don't have to do comment, uh, color commentary, right? Where it's like, Again, wow, look at the way he, they draw curves. Oh, no, but I did I did ask yeah. one guy, I was like, okay, so, you know, Artist X is over there. He's got a tackle box full of pens. You got two pencils, an eraser, and a Sharpie. What's up with that? <laughs> is there a winner? Is there a winner? No, the winner is the crowd, because then they Otherwise they do raffle good. tickets. Everybody that's in the crowd gets a raffle ticket. You raffle the art off at the end. Oh, do they have to pay for the raffle ticket, or they no. just get it for they get it being, for being in the panel? Yep. Yes, sir. You just you show up, you get a raffle ticket, and then the crowd mm-hmm. the crowd participation is what do you want to see the artist draw. Now, as I stated before, I did a few on stage on the show floor. Those were the sketch duels. Mm. And it Mm. was cool being on the show floor. But, Francis, you might recall in 2016, 2017, being being at a convention running panels in open air. It's tough, especially when there's other loud attractions happening within any kind of so, sound sound uh, earshot go ahead so the sketch duel was being done on the show floor or yes. something like where yeah. there was other stuff wow that's awful that's that's bad it's not ideal it's yeah. not ideal for sure um the the artists were given lapels but mm-hmm. i'm not i I don't ever claim to be an audio expertise expert, but like they weren't, they weren't turned. The gain wasn't up enough or something because they basically had to eat the lapel mics to be heard. No, I does that mean, go ahead. Does that mean that there was a center stage on the show floor that people got to like watch and attend? Mm -hmm. So there's like, Oh wow. Mm -hmm. Because, Uh, okay, LA Comic Con does the same thing. Sure, all of the main shows are in on the show floor, which really okay. weirds me out because all the big celebrities end up on the show floor. So that's they have panels. they have a big theater room for the big celebrities. They have mm-hmm. the the small panel rooms for everything, ding ding, everything else. Mm-hmm. Excuse me, and then this was just part. It was just on the show floor. It was just kind of interesting. And I, I like the idea okay. of it. 
Um, mm-hmm. But I think it, 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 personally, I think it should be closer to Artist Alley amongst the artists or near them. Yeah, um, makes sense. And it should also be at least facing away from any other loud attraction that might be happening. Right. In my case, there's karaoke happening, you know, 35 feet from the stage. So it was basically impossible to be heard. Um, The handhelds that were on stage, it's... I understand eating those. I understand how, I'm, you know, those type of microphones work. Yeah. You know, we, we've been doing this for a little while. And I was eating those mics, and, I mean, I could hear me on the PA, but I really couldn't. I don't know if it was actually being projected loud enough. So it's just, I think the sketch duels, they get a small enough crowd that I think that it, they could be in a panel room. And it's just more of an intimate thing anyway. Just a fun little Yeah, it's that's such a that's such bad management. No offense to, you know, them. But yeah, like you know, especially if a sketch tool maybe they just assume a sketch tool isn't as talky as other panels. Possibly. But. Possibly. I mean, I don't know I don't know what the theory or the idea behind it is. I was just as one who experienced it and spoke to audience members, you know, I got the heard the same thing of like well, the thing I heard was I couldn't hear anything. Yeah. Like, I knew you guys were talking, but I couldn't hear anything. And because that artist had to eat the microphone, it just sounded like the whole time. I saw your mouth was moving, so I know something was happening yeah. on stage. So, I mean, it was unfortunate. That one, you know, that one I definitely was had to project pretty hard. Yeah. Just to make sure that people could hear. Uh, a couple of the panels, uh, my mic, for some reason, wasn't turned on. Um, Project. So I did. I mean, I can, because you're sitting there, you can hear. Yeah. You know, there's, it's not like I had an in-ear or there was a monitor behind the stage or anything, but we can hear the PA. And I, I could hear yeah. that I wasn't, there's like one or two panels where my mic wasn't turned on. So I was just like, immediately, I was like, oh, shit. Hey, don't you test that stuff before the the? Don't you test the mics before you start the panels? Well, I did after. I that. Guess not. Uh, you know, I gave him a little. Oh, after that, a little tip, <laughs> tippy tap after that. Yeah. Uh, check, check, one, two, check. Yeah, check. But yeah, just like I said, oh, it, a great learning experience, fun to do. Good. Met a Good. few artists that like were were. I'm not gonna say we're buddies and friends, but we're you know. I made I made new acquaintances, new acquaintances least. with people, you mm-hmm. know, like mm-hmm. the Rodney Barnes guy from the Boondocks. He was like, when you post this, definitely tag me, man. Let me know. I'm like, oh, that's awesome, man. Thanks. And one of the artists that I met, he's like, let's, I'll, let's, I'll, I'll be on your show. Why not? And you said it's generic. I can do generic. I'm like, good. <laughs> so yeah, it, it was it was fun. It's great time. Good. good. Definitely go when it hits your city. Uh, and then Francis, I, don't think it, I, don't uh, think I meant that for the fan, people, you know. Uh, so I don't think Fan Expo comes to California. I no, I don't Fan think Expo so because you guys got your own shit. But oh, yeah, we have Comic Con International, yeah, I guess. So yeah. we, they probably have a monopoly on on what can come out there. But uh, I don't know how to switch out of that. But um, I don't know. Uh, you know. After after one of the nights of of, yes. of the uh, convention, I was thinking, yes. you know, I'd like to go. I like to go see a flick. You know, go relax, yes. have big old thing of, of chemical dripped popcorn and big old bucket of soda. Oh, oh god, yeah. You know, yeah. Just, just watch something, relax. Yeah. And I looked and I was just like, damn, there's nothing I want to watch. Nothing looks interesting to me. Mm-hmm. Francis, why don't more theaters show more retro movies more often and in more cities than L.A., Chicago, and New York? Because no one will pay for them. I would go see the shit out of Ghostbusters or Gremlins or... 
a fucking police academy even. I'd go see police academy in a theater. People, the, the, I hate to say it, but like the movie theater experience is dying. It like is. it's not a thing people really want to do. And I'm one of the few people who are like, send me to the theater, right? Like my local theater here is showing a bunch of indie films. They're not like your old, like a, a Ghostbusters 1986 or something or 84 or whatever. Like it's none of that stuff, but it's like movies you've never heard of before that are just, they're like, yeah, we have no one's watching like the blockbusters. We're just going to put in these smaller films in these single theaters and maybe it'll sell out. I mean, I went to watch a movie um, that was that that's uh, it's an Apple. It's an Apple uh, plus hmm. mo- movie. Apple. So like I got to see it in the theaters. It. No, it was, it, it was literally an Apple movie. It's oh, an okay. Apple in the beginning. Okay. Yeah. So it wasn't even just like an Apple spotlight or it wasn't like a spot, like one of those weird films. It was like Apple made this movie and I watched it. It was good. Um, Fly me to the moon. If you ever, if you get to see it, I think it's a good movie um, about the space, about Apollo 11. Mm. Um, it's a romantic comedy, weirdly enough too, but it's mostly a drama, okay. <laughs> <laughs> mostly a drama but it's like, I it's like, not even a drama. It's a comedy. Like, it's a comedy drama with a little romance in it. Wasn't 11 the first ones that landed on the moon? The first, yeah. So, the the premise of the the movie is Scarlett Johansson plays a con a marketing woman, not a con artist. She's a con artist, but uh, a marketing woman who has to who who the government hires to potentially create a fake moon landing in case they don't make it to the they don't actually make it to the moon. Uh. So that's the the premise of the movie. Um, it was good. Anyway, anyway. so the, I think, and old movies can be seen at home on streaming. Sure, sure. you're, you're not wrong there. You're not wrong. Yeah, yeah. But you know, like, you know, my mom and I went and saw Smokey and the Bandit in the theater. I think last year or the year prior, when it yeah. when it was like that Criterion or whatever, you know, where the guy sitting in the big rocker chair tells you about the the movie with his cool specs and. <sighs> He's yeah, interesting facts. He's always the, he's the one host for all the yeah Criterion movies. Yeah, um, Criterion. Yeah, I can't tell you how many times I've went and, went and seen uh, Transformers '86. You know, because it's in theaters just, like almost every summer now. Every few years too, they do uh, like this year. I think in November they're doing Blazing Saddles. No, so. You know, yeah, they did it a few years ago. I saw it in theaters like five years ago, and then they're doing it again this year for the fifth, whatever, 60th anniversary. Oh, whatever. my God. So they're I'm, doing Blazing Saddles in theaters. I'm I'm going to that. It's, a, it's a, of course, a, a fan, a, a, not a fan, phantom event. I think that's what it's called, phantom yeah. event. Yeah. So it's one of those. So you go, go ahead, you know, go watch it. I mean, I've, but, I've yeah, Godzilla the, a bunch of times. Mm-hmm. I've gone to see those or not. I've paid for tickets and then gotten them refunded because I couldn't go because of work. Um, yeah, I, I love that type of shit. I just wish it happened more often. That's all. I'm with you. I'm with you. And, and, and if you find the right places, you're right. If you live in L.A., you're right. There, there's, there's enough theaters here, like kind of like we have one called the, the New Beverly owned by Quentin Tarantino. And that always shows old movies that you could easily see on streaming, but I mean, you get the theater experience. There, there doesn't seem to be a week that goes by on the old Twitter machine there, where I don't see some 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 person out in some sunny city. I'm guessing it's L.A. Mm-hmm. in line to go see Jaws, or or first Friday the 13th or something like that. You know, just name yeah. something from the 80s. And there's people lining up to go, you know, see... see. I tried to just think of something really obscure and I couldn't think of it. I mean, I'm one of those people. I, 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 I Anytime they show a, a movie that's old, I saw Jaws in theaters when they did the, you know, whatever anniversary it was, I went and saw in theaters. Like, if they, you know, when they do that stuff... Uh, they they're gonna do it again. I'm sure for the 40th anniversary of Back to the Future, they're gonna show it in theaters. Mm-hmm. 
um, this October. There's rumor like, apparently that Chevy Chase is going to do a 30th, 30 plus uh, Chris, Chris, Christmas vacation showing here uh, yeah. this, this winter. Uh, so, we, so I might I might be checking that out. I was say, you live by a major city, so I feel like you probably will get. I mean, you just have to look at the right theaters, yeah. but I'm sure you get a lot of old movies. I'm sure there I'm is. Sure it's, just, like, it's something I didn't really think about and didn't do any yeah. research. I was just like, oh, you know what? Uh, other than the Bandit, um, and Transformers, yeah, I can't think of any retro movies I've seen. But it's just something that I would like. I would like that. Yeah, no, you should totally. It's fun. It's like a fun. It's fun. It's a fun experience to be in a movie that has been around forever, and a, with a crowd that is probably much like I was seeing it for the first time. You know, like I never saw Jaws, so being in the theater to see Jaws for the first time with a bunch of people who've seen Jaws for the first time is like oh, for that like. Oh, that's where that comment comes from. Oh, we mm. do need a bigger boat. I get it now. Okay. Oh, that is a bad, bad, a bad hat, Harry. That's funny. That's the, that's one of the, you know, uh, I forget JJ Abrams production company or somebody says that in their little intro to their production company. It's like, oh, I get it now. I see. Okay. So you like, you get pop culture references because mm. oh, you get to see the movie. Oh, so, I, I, I dated yeah. a chick that was was. Uh, a bit younger than me and knew all the memes but didn't know the source material so i was like i mean here a lot yeah. of them come from movies let me show you this movie well you were you were you were i don't know if i forget if, if you mentioned it on here or not but you you knew someone who was who didn't know who Lu i love lucy was or who lucy was and i love lucy like yeah. they were looking at a meme with lucy no idea who she was I'm like oh she's an icon Oh, that's sad. You don't know who this icon is, right? And it was it was colorized Lucy, so it was like I think that was like what sixties, oh. uh, maybe early seventies. No. Well, oh yeah, it depends. Yeah, yeah, it, it, yeah. If it's the We Love Lucy stuff, yeah, then, I don't, yeah, I don't know what the show. I I heard the voice and kind of looked yeah. over and saw the fiery red hair in color. I'm like, oh, they yeah, did, they, well, that's Lucille Ball. And he's like, how did you know that? I was like, because I know things. And and uh, they did uh, colorize her '50s show. Mm -hmm. uh, some of the episodes, I think, even the whole season. I think, or all all 180 plus episodes, they did colorization of the show. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, yeah, in the yeah. So that, I mean, it, it's sad, but um, I say, yeah, dude, go want, go find them, go hunt them down. Yeah. I, mean, I that's all I do now is like I hunt down obscure movies or concerts or stuff like like the average person isn't going to look up mm. and i and I, I usually will find something that's like oh i'll attend you know i'll i'll, I'll go check this out like cuz there's a lot of hidden gems oh, so yeah. there's a yeah. there's a guy that was here recently um mc chris uh mm. famous mm -hmm. for adult swim famous from mm -hmm. adult swim uh he was going to be he was here in denver and I asked the girlfriend, I'm like, hey, you get tickets to a lot of shows, you know, like some stuff I know, some I don't. How would you like to go see something you probably know once I tell you, but yeah. weren't aware of prior? And she was like, I'm game. Let's go. And unfortunately, you know, financials, you know, you sure. got to be an adult. Uh, but even trying to justify it, I'm like, okay, outside of like three songs from MC Chris, like, there's not a lot I like from the guy, but you know it would have been fun to see, but it wasn't. Yeah, I'm not. It wasn't yeah. a big enough need or want to to risk financial issues. So it was it was a missed opportunity. But you know, yeah, I'm sure. I should one repeat that. Will come. Go ahead. I would just say during this economic times, be you know, the be, yeah, the do it sparingly. You don't don't go. Good. <laughs> My advice is to just do all of it. Like if you, but I, I mean, yeah, uh, uh, go do it sparingly. But um, it's a uh, it's out there. Yeah. Uh, but that's all. I mean, like it's just it's, it's it's nice that it's out there. Well, your favorite movie is being played somewhere. I would hope so. I would hope so. Well, something that you just mentioned, Francis, kind of, you didn't even realize it, but you mentioned 
frugal. And I did. I did too. I guess. And <laughs> I got the hiccups. Uh, sure. But uh, you know, being frugal is great. We should be frugal. Is- I should. I should probably be more frugal in in life. It's just in general. Same. Yeah. What I have, I have so. I, on the Facebooks, I, I I joined a few groups of I, I I own a Honda Civic, so I thought maybe if I join a Honda Civic group, people have some insight, you know, maybe get some inspiration, maybe even from whatever. Go ahead. I, I thought you, you joined those groups to. I thought you joined those groups to mock them. I for their no, I didn't advice. join to mock. I didn't join to mock. <laughs> oh, okay. But once okay. I realized okay, okay. that everybody yeah. on these forums, let's just call them that, <laughs> because it's I'm old school. Uh, sure. On these forums, ask the same questions every day. D- uh, ask people to d- send them links for the items that they own, so basically they can have a car that everybody else. They they have a car that looks just like everybody else's car. And the one that fucking just grinds my gears, chops my hide, and fucking generally pisses me off is people. Grind your gears, yeah. And it doesn't matter whether it's cars, podcast equipment, fucking Mm. jewelry, whatever. Whatever it is. Yes. When somebody says, I'm looking for the cheapest. Bleh. Mm-hmm. That phrase just gets under my skin. And I don't know why. Why? I don't know why. Oh, okay. I really don't. But to me, and maybe that's my own fucking, you know, a fault of, of mine that I need to work on. But sure. when I buy anything, I buy a little bit more than what I need. Right. Sometimes I buy way over what I need. And then I can grow into it, which is really what you should do if you buy, especially if you buy tech. You should probably think a little bit ahead. Well, that Yeah, that's called f- future-proofing. You're future-proofing right. your tech, yeah. I remember computers before 1999. So, oh, oh, shit, yeah. look at that. Someone just joined us. Who is this? Hello, person who joined. Uh, receiving, receiving, ad, 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 adio, ad, adio, re- receiving. Adjudio. Adjudio. Receiving adjudio. Yes. Welcome. Welcome. Thank you for joining. Thanks following. Yeah. Um, and there's just something about the, the, the phrase, I'm looking for the cheapest. Regardless of what it is. Sure, sure. My my thought on, on that is if you buy something that's the cheapest, you're going to be having to buy it again or buying something else to replace the thing you just bought because you decided to be a cheap ass and get something just to get it as opposed right. to waiting and buying something of quality or, in some <laughs> cases, sure, above what you need. Right. I just don't understand that. I just, I, 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 I mean, no, look, you know, not everyone can afford everything. No. Know? So when you can, yeah, sure. And, and plus a lot of people are, are very much um, instant gratification. I mean, we live in a world of instant gratification. Mm-hmm. So this does, does kind of make sense. Like, well, I kind of want the thing now. I don't really want to wait. That's why we're all in debt. Like we're all in debt because we couldn't wait. None of sure. us waited. Like, I, I we just I'm, can't. I'm probably guilty of it myself. You know, but 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 the guy who's saying, "Hey, how do I get the cheapest thing?" He's not the say. He's not re- what he's really saying is, "How can I get the most inexpensive but quality thing?" He's not saying, "How do I get like the thing that'll break down the quickest?" Or what? How can I? What? What's the thing that will? cost me the least and then fall apart the fastest. But I think it's implied that whenever we ask for like, well, what's the cheapest thing in this thing? We're not looking for like the cheapest thing that you can get on Timu or Wish. Oh, okay. At least you went there. I was I was getting ready to throw another company under the fucking under the bus, but you went 
You went there, so okay, cool. More what other company were you going to talk Harbor Freight. Oh, oh. <laughs> I mean, right, sure, yeah, yeah. But like, but you, you know, those companies, right? Like, you know, we're not saying that. Right. It's more of, okay. But yeah, I mean, people want stuff now and people don't want to spend the money and... I think there's also a, an idea that just because it's, it's, it's expensive doesn't mean it's good, too. You're, you're 100% that. correct. You're 100% correct. Yeah. yeah. But there's just there's something about the phrase that just just bugs me. I don't... I, and also, like, as far as the car world goes, like, yeah. it's not fucking 2001 anymore. The, the Fast and Furious... Yeah doesn't really exist and the import scene died about the same time the movie came out so like I, sort of yeah like yeah the, the 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 i think it's for at least for the car group stuff mm -hmm. it's like look the the posts are looking for like some sort of like mutual masturbation type of thing or like looking for like kudos, like oh yeah. Look at the wheels I just bought. Look at the sticker I applied to my car, so you can't see the chrome, which I'm guilty of too. But I don't post about it. I don't know. It's just it, it's just the, the the car world, especially Hondas, very interesting. But it, it's even with PC gear. It's the same kind of thing. Like, oh, yeah. look, you know, I want to. I've been thinking about water cooling my my computer. What are, what's the best options out there? What does that translate to? I'm too fucking lazy to do my own research. Do it for me. Yeah. Uh, true. -ish. I think I think I mean, some yeah. of that is there. If you are truly yeah. ignorant of something, or less mm -hmm. educated on something. I think there's better ways to form the question. Right. You know, or what have you. It's just, it, there's just something. I get about it. it. Especially, like I said, in the car world, whether it's Mopar parts, Honda stuff, fucking Vespa stuff. I just, something about just the word cheapest. I just don't like. It's. Yeah, yeah. No, I get it. I just, it, I just think you should buy, car, buy quality. Uh, well, especially since cars are such... are kind of important, right? Like, you need it to be able to run. You know, it's also, like, kind of a weapon. It can be, because it can, you know... It, no, it it's is. just a massive piece of... It is. Like, it's all these, like, really kind of... These big, really huge things... So you should probably care a lot about what you're putting into it mm -hmm. and, and, and maintaining it and, and, and taking care of it sure. and, like, get the most quality things for it. Otherwise, you're putting yourself and other people in danger. So right. in that respect, 100%, like, yeah, get the best quality stuff at all times. Don't, you know, don't settle for less. You know, get, get the best, the best, if you're going to do that for something that is literally a weapon on wheels. Right. right, like you don't want to, yeah. yeah. If you're just like, what's the best brake pad, especially on some Facebook group, you're going to get thousand yeah. different answers. Because sure. depending on depending on how the person that's answering, they mm -hmm. might drive, or they might have a half track car. You know, right. they might be a full race car. They might drive like a grandma. This person might be a teenager, just learn how to drive, and fucking slams on the brakes every time they touch the brakes. So right. it's it. You really need to form the question of like, fuck, I don't know. It's, it's a day. I have a daily driver. That's all it's for. Is yeah. it's a daily driver? What brakes would you recommend? I yeah. drive like an asshole. What are the best? Well, brakes? no one's gonna say that. You know what? I'm no saying. one's gonna. You know that. what I'm saying. Yeah. You know what I'm saying. Yeah. Yeah. I take this, I drive, it's a daily driver, but I take it to the track on the weekends. Should I just get a second set of brake pads? Would you, you know, would the, the fucking, 
the, the, the hive mind suggest, you know what I'm saying? It's, I don't know. It's just, Have you noticed go ahead. if these people ignore the dumb questions or are you upset? <laughs> There's that a lot of trolling. There's a lot of trolling words. that happens. Okay. Well, that's uh, again, which too. is kind of a result of why I'm there now because I just realized that like the same, the exact same questions get asked multiple times a day. And I just well, this is something you've been telling me for a while is that a lot of these forums I, ask the same basic I'm not, question. I'm not there by like, force. I can leave at any point, but it's fun to troll sure. people at the same time. You know, like I don't know. It's 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 the internet's a fun, interesting place, and there, yeah. but like even if it was a bunch of people sitting in a room, and somebody said, "What's the you know cheapest set of tires I can get?" Like, I got to set out back that are all bald and shit. I'll sell them to you. You know, like, yeah, you just, we, we have a, a fairly large vocabulary in the English language. I think people need to use them, use the other words that are out there. Well, be a little more descriptive. Has, well, uh, sure. But we, it, we, you know, we, we are at a point that, people are relying on AI and the internet to kind of take care of everything lately. Yeah. yeah. I, I hear more and more people being like, Oh yeah, I use chat GPT to kind of like condense all my, like give me the perfect way to reply to an email was somebody told me this like, Oh, uh, anytime we get a business email, I use chat GPT to, re to make the perfect reply. And I'm cause I don't want to think about it. So, they don't have, people are trying to find more and more ways not to think about stuff anymore, not to like figure things out. Mm. They're like, let, I'll let the computer do all the work. I'm just going to sit here and relax and like pluck it and then copy and paste it somewhere. So when you're saying people are asking dumb questions and aren't expanding their vocabulary, they don't have to because the internet and, and, and AI and all that stuff is being like, don't worry, we got you. We can we can take care of that for you. Like you don't have to, uh, you don't have to think anymore. You know, the, there's um, uh, the the new iPad is coming out, and they're like, hey, watch this, and they're doing like math on the iPad. I saw I, that. Like there's, I saw yeah. that, and like making yeah. pie pie charts and shit with the math. And, yeah. Okay. Yeah. We all know how I feel about the Apple, but. <laughs> <laughs> Man, I watched that that little tech demo. I think about fifteen to seventeen hundred times, and I was just I was like, "That's that's pretty cool." I'm impressed. But now you don't have to think about it, though. You you never have to think about it, right? Like if you're a high schooler having to learn math, you never have to think about it anymore because mm. the iPad will do it for you. you. You know, oh, this math problem, don't worry about it. The iPod iPad's got gotcha. you. Oh. Uh, anything, just oh, the, the, the iPad or Apple or uh, Google, whatever, Gemini, they got you. Don't worry about it. They got you taken care of. Freaking Gemini. Stupid Gemini. I hate Gemini. I mean, it came after Apollo. What do you want? No. Jeez. <laughs> Points? Mm hmm. Okay. I don't have a button, so I can't press it. <laughs> you, you have the button. There you go. Um, that's a, that's a space joke for all of you out there that didn't get that. Um, but yeah, it, it's, uh, yeah, just it, retro gaming, car parts, computer stuff. I just think like change, change, change the verbiage from cheapest to like best value. Bang for the buck. Or something like yeah, which I which I do which I do believe that's what they really mean. I do believe that. Like, is, I think that's. What mean. I'm not an idiot, yeah. but I'm literal. Yeah. I'm a very literal right. idiot, and when I see those when I see those words, that's just where my brain goes. You're looking for sure. something that costs twenty dollars because you just want to have it on your car so you can impress some internet nerd that thinks he's Vin Diesel. And this is Brian, live 10 seconds at a time. 
I don't see. You're right. I don't see. They used to have like, and maybe I'm just not around to see them, but I used to, our freeways used to be um, littered with like lines of classic cars or souped up cars or motorcycles or whatever, like traveling, you know, you just see just a line of them. I did see the other day. Uh, I forget where I was going, but it was just a line of Volks, old 60s Volkswagens, like just Bugs. lined up in a row. No, 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 they were maybe not 60. I, I don't know what, but they weren't, none of them were bugs. They were all, okay. they were all like different VW. They had the VW on the, on the hubcaps. So were they but the bus? Some, like, it looked like, yeah, it looked like one of them looked like the bus, but different. Like they were all kind of modded in some way. What about the thing? But, no thing. No, I love the thing. Okay, the I didn't no know thing. if you were aware of the thing or not. Yeah, the thing is like an off-road sort of looking Kinda, thing. Yeah, some sort of like Kinda. fucking African fucking safari vehicle or something. Yeah, 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 exactly. Like an off-road. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, there but was a vehicle no, no. actually called... I don't know if it was actually called the thing or not, but that's what it's uh, known as. I think it is called the thing. I think it says... Oh, no, it's a, it's a Type 181 is what it was called, but it's 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 also known as the thing. Yeah, it's pretty cool. It uh, is. You know what else is pretty cool, Francis? What is pretty cool? Uh, I may have already mentioned this in this this past hour or so, but you give me a live mic in front of a crowd, I am going to shamelessly plug this podcast, sure. and. I hope some of the you that are out there listening to this this episode are are new and get to see what this show is all about because this is what you're gonna get. Um, <laughs> sort of, sort of. Sort of. No, it's, we we always try to evolve this, but um, no, it's uh, it's all over the place. It's all over the place. It's always a work in progress. Generic it is always going to be generic, especially when I get. Muppet approval of my genericness. I'm going to stick right to what I know. Need that guy. Get him as a guest. That was awesome. I know. I, I'm. I, I'm gonna reach out because why not? What's the worst anybody can say to you? Hey, we had a great panel. Or we got weird feed. Or we got weird feedback. You have a picture with him? <laughs> yes, Francis. Okay. That's the one thing I did do because. You know, I was there. I was going to be there alone as well. I, I needed to document this. I wanted, what I wanted to do is actually have a new stabilizer arm thing. What do they call it? Gimbal? Oh, a gimbal? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and I couldn't find my old one. So I wanted to set that up. Didn't. Yeah. So I made sure at the end of every panel... Even if there were sixteen hundred people in the in the panel, that I got a picture with them. Okay, so I at least have that. It so was funny because when I took the picture with Rodney Barnes, the the, the mm -hmm. Boondocks guy, I didn't realize yeah. how tall he was. I went to take the picture. I'm like, holy shit, you're really tall. Let me extend my arm even further. Kind of had a moment like I had with Hercules, actually, as you mentioned him earlier in the in the show, when I took a picture with what's his name, Hercules, um, Kevin, Kevin Conroy, what's his name, Kevin Sorbo, Sorbo, Sorbo. Uh, I took a picture and I basically took a picture of the ceiling of the convention center we were in, and he was, went, he was that tall, yeah, he was like, wow, dude, you suck at this. Let me take the picture. He grabbed my, he snatched my phone. He didn't grab it. He snatched it out of my hand and took the selfie of the two of us. Like, hey, man, thanks. But, uh, yeah, that was my weekend. It was fun. It's great. Good. Can't Good. wait to do it again. Hopefully get to do it again. And... We'll I'm sure you'll be fine. I'm, I'm sure. sure I'm sure yeah. everything is going to be great, and but like well, I hopefully, said, I, I just hopefully get, I just get, get to do nervous. it in other conventions. I would love to. So, yeah. so in in my in my resume of moderating, I can now yeah. check off one one two two three two shows two Denver shows where I've got to to moderate. 
Nice. Uh, so that's pretty cool. Um, and this, and <clears throat> really, Fan Expo being the big check mark. Right? Yeah. Because this is, this is Denver, you know, at its heart, it's Denver Comic Con. Yeah. Which, you know, I, who knows? Which people still call. Well, I mean, I think, I think in every city that, regardless of the the parent company running the show, I think the fans, the attendees, the colloquialism is Comic Con. Hey, what were you doing this weekend? I was at Fan Expo. Well, what the hell is that? It's, it's basically it's like Comic Con. Oh, okay, yeah. So yeah, it's it it's a a big check in the in the um, achievements list that I didn't know I had. <laughs> you know, I mean, like yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it it was an opportunity that came up, and I took it, and I mm-hmm. I th- I I feel like I was successful. Good, I'm happy to hear it. So I think you know you can't ask for a lot more than that. No, no. Well, you can. You can. You, you totally, you, to, you totally can. And I probably should have. Yeah. But as far as like asking of myself, oh I, yeah, yeah. I think I did what was asked of me. I think I did it yeah. at at least a eighty-five to ninety percent, you know, score rate. And hopefully, the next time you get to do it, you'll have enough lead lead time to be like. I, I need all of the days to be able to, I need to yes. do all of those days. Well, yeah. yeah. And it, I mean, like, yeah. Well, it's not going to be a part, part of, part of my interview process was this having the entire weekend off, but it was fine. It was fine. But, and it's going to be a three day. It's going to be a three day event next year. Anyway, so. four day still. Yeah. Wow. Um, you do the third, huh? Wow. And it's been four day, I think for two years now. Maybe yeah, one year. Oh. Maybe this was the second year. I can't recall. It is the second year, yes. Okay. Um, and as as far as, like, the artists that I know, the vendors that I know, they said they had an, a, a phenomenal Friday. Excuse me, I got the hiccups. Good. A phenomenal Friday. There was great foot traffic. Um, right. And then it just kind of died off after that. And I don't know exactly what the what the reasoning of that is it could have been all the star power there's a lot of big names they packed it all on friday and then they gave the rest of the weekend yeah and where it, you know what, but i also think what they're saying is that like on a three-day show people are more they they spread their spending out over three days and it uh, was totally. th- th- people they were saying like they just felt like they were able to recoup a little bit faster on a three day show. Well, four day show take... that's that's heavily packed. Mm-hmm. Friday was really good, and then it just kind of died off after that. Not everybody, yeah, they... mind you, yeah. but a very common answer was, "Yeah, it's uh, it's a little slow, it's a little slow." They they do they need to take a page from Anime Expo because Anime Expo happened that same weekend and was endlessly but it's Anime Expo different different setting different different type of thing but I mean I'm sure they could take a page from whatever Anime Expo is doing and, and and try to spread out whatever it is that they're doing to get people to come all four days and spend money all four days. Um, yeah, I, I, more exclusives maybe. I don't know. Maybe I, I think they did a great job by making sure there were concessions and not just cotton candy and hot nuts. Like there was actual food. Pizza. There was really expensive pizza. Basically, all the concessions, regardless of what it was. Mm-hmm. If you, I, I mean, pizza was the cheapest, but it was, you know, eight dollars a slice, and you Gross. can, you know, depending. You could probably get get away with one slice, but you know, two slices is fairly average. So yeah. everything, basically everything, was sixteen bucks, which isn't horrible by any means. But pizza, come on, pizza can be sold for a dollar. Yeah. Well, uh, and you'd sell a lot more pizza if you sold it for a dollar, if you, in my opinion. Sure. But uh, th- th- that keeps people in the show. 
where in years past, regardless of who owned the show, there wasn't as many, if there wasn't a lot of concessions or any, people left. They, they strolled through downtown to get food because there was nothing inside the convention to keep them, keep them there. Subway. If we were in oh, Seattle, no, that, was, that, that was Emerald. That was Emerald. Said, yeah. Never mind. That was Emerald. Emer- <laughs> for, for the Oops. uninitiated, if you're ever in in Seattle, and especially if you go to their convention center, which is drawing a blank on my brain right now, um, in just outside the convention center entrance is a subway. Just inside the entrance of the convention center is a subway. About a block away, I think north is a subway about two blocks after that is another subway francis and i know this because we purchased subway while going to meet friends and passed two other subways on the way Mm -hmm. to go eat subway with our friend Mm -hmm. ridiculous ridiculous yum um especially with all the subway i've eaten recently It's, it's just ridiculous to think back at that uh, but um, that's really all I have for this week. It was fun. It was a fun, you know, the convention-filled episode of me saying it was a lot of fun over and over. But I don't know, like, how else to explain it. I sit there and bitch about people not using vocabulary, and I myself don't use enough. But, I mean, you know. I, I just... getting Getting the opportunity to not only throw myself out there and and try something good night ginger especially yes good night um just try something and for for a, a company to be like who the hell is the 303 ninja well, let's sign him up give him a shot it goes a lot did towards- you have a 303 ninja at your panels too or was it just poi come on man i'm just saying you gotta do both i did Oh, That's okay. what I'm saying. Come on, man. All right. No, I think I just did Josh Hawks. No. Oh. But everybody was coming up and asking and trying to figure out Twitter. Because you could have just gone up there and been like, hey, everyone, welcome to the panel. I'm Josh Hawks, uh, the 303 underscore ninja. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> right. Just want to let you know. That's my ad. Uh, and then go on to the go on to the panel from there. Yeah, I, I think I said uh, it makes me the perfect, uh, the most generic podcast on the in, in, on the internet, which makes me the perfect host for this panel because I don't have any, you know, main interest. But no, I, no nobody cares about me. We're here to talk to bleh mm. and what they're into. It was cool. It was good. Well, I'll, I'll put them all out there as long as they sound okay. I'll put them all out there as like bonus as a bonus content or something. Yeah. If you join the Patreon, that I need to actually launch. Um, but uh, Francis, <laughs> it's that time. Where can people find you on the internets if they would like to do so? Well, I am Francis, also known as the other guy, at AKA the other guy. <laughs> on all of the social medias uh yeah uh super geeked up tomorrow live improv fun times go watch that's it (laughs) you you should go watch because watching watching my friend do this my friends do this over the years has been a lot of fun i've gotten to do it too and i'm not an improv guy but i try when the, the things come up, you got to give it a shot, right? Yeah, yeah. And that's what—that—that's that, the 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 era that I'm in is in the let's fuck it, let's try things. One day I'm gonna try and get all my social media stuff figured out, and get it all in one area and syn- synergetic. But I don't right now. So you can find me at three hundred three underscore ninja on the twitters, three hundred three ninja on the Instagram. Uh, what are we talking about here? Call us. Voicemail text 314-764-7631. It spells out POI pod one. There's some synergy there. You can email us at the POI podcast at gmail.com. Um, that's really everything. Follow us at the POI podcast at all the places that 
podcast things are at. <laughs> I don't know. Because like Google Podcast doesn't exist anymore. You know, all these places are just going away. I don't know. Uh, but we'll be back here next Tuesday or hopefully later that week, depending on my work schedule, to talk more nonsense for an hour. Hope you all join us. Francis, thank you for being my podcasting partner for life. Thank you all for joining, hanging out with us. Thank you to receiving Agio Audio for uh, hanging out with us. Thanks for the follow. We'll be back to have some fun. The song's ending. The podcast is ending. I think we're done here. What do you think, Francis? Yes. <laughs>